In the middle of the night, I smoke some dope just to let it go. Baby, let me drive the boat. Freedom, niggas in death row. In the end, I carry all my sorrow, all my agony. Don't switch up, nigga. Yeah, I know they really not for me. They not. We'll talk about God, but I already know what that nigga got for me. Bitch wanna go on shopping spree. Drug gon' take my misery. Take that hoe, no fuckery. What more is in store for me? What more do they want for me? Been lonely for eternity. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Oh no, hey. All right, YouTube, what is going on? I'm your host, Wob, a.k.a. Wob's Warden. Hope you guys are having a good day. Good morning, good night, man. Thank you for clicking on the video. Today's video is very, I would say, I wouldn't necessarily say tragic, but I would say it's very confusing because it's a little bit of politic in it. You know, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up. Definitely have because, you know, I'm more invested with a certain person in this case that's been going on but it's the megan versus tory lane's trial now i know there's a lot of mixed opinions going on there's tory lane's side there's megan's side there's kelsey's side all that doesn't matter no more because the jury has decided the judge has decided that tory lane's aka daystar whatever his name is aka right tory lane's has been charged with all three 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 not just two not one all three charges which is insane to me because you know as i was following the case i'm thinking tory is one up you know he has um kelsey kind of on the same side you know it's pretty much kelsey and tory versus megan and the whole time tory was really one one and three like lebron Actually, wait, that one makes sense. One and three, like the or three one. It seemed like he was three one. And then LeBron, I mean, Megan, aka LeBron, came back from a three one deficit, you know, and it's crazy. But I don't have all the information. You know, we're going to get another perspective from the people at Playback, aka Agent and Low. So shout out y'all, man. Shout out y'all. But before we get into it, I'm going to you guys go down below, hit that like button. Hit subscribe and tell me if y'all like the new quality upgrade. Tell me if y'all like the new quality upgrade. Yeah, you see it. You see it. Look. <laughs> Alright, but let's get right into the video though. Let me stop playing. Yo, man, the verdict just came in. Tory Lanez is found guilty on all three charges, man. Um, for people who don't know, sentences could be um as high as 22 or 25 years. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is a lot, man. It is a lot. You would think he yeah. murdered her. So for those who don't know, um, we actually did a um a video last week kind of covering over the first uh, week of the trial, two-week trial. Meg took the stand, told her side of the story. If you don't know, long story short, after leaving the Kylie Jenny, Jenner uh, kickback party, they went uh -huh. into the car, uh -huh. met the stallion, Tory Lanez, Kelsey Harris, and Quan, the body guard slash driver were all in the car. There was a verbal altercation. The uh -huh. climax of that um, confrontation was um, Meg slandering Tori's rap career. Uh -huh. She then gets out the car. Tori grabs a gun and somewhere near around the car, around the window, shoots at her feet um, three to five times and tells her, dance, bitch, dance. The story itself <laughs> sounded a bit uh, hyperbolic, a bit colorful. So that's why a lot of people are waiting for more information to come out. Her best friend, Kelsey Harris, took the stance in a deposition back in September, this year September, even though the events happened two years ago. In a deposition, she claimed that she more or less cooperated with Meg's story. Maybe a few details here and there weren't the same, but more or less cooperated, saying that she saw Tory Lane shoot Meg. She then takes a stance, however, last week, says a lot of things that I said um, a week in, in the deposition were lies. I'm mm. here now to straighten the lies. Mm. And not only did she See, not really straighten any lies, she started- See, the crazy, the, the thing about it is like, <sighs> like, you know, no, the, the biggest thing, right, in this whole thing was that initially Megan went to the doctor, said she got shot. They didn't find no, no, um, no gun, I think gun shards. I forget what it's called, but they didn't find no gun pieces in her foot. But then she says she got stabbed. I mean, not stabbed. She said she stepped on broken glass. I think it might have been there was no glass shards in her foot. I don't know. But her story was very wishy-washy. So, you know, I'm thinking that that would be a huge indicator in her not being so credible. But then again, we know that in America, you know, you know, 
you typically believe the woman when she's you know been assaulted you know that's that's fair that's fair to say i would i would too but you know i also know that innocent until proven guilty so it's really hard to pick a side for real when you know you're a fan of one artist but also you know you have a black mom too and if it was your mom you know it'd be a little bit different so that's why i don't particularly get too in depth with it i just like to know the information so i can see what the justice system really like we gonna really see if the justice system is pr providing justice you get what i'm saying start pleading the fifth saying that i didn't see anything she said she didn't know really got nowhere with that so this past week the um the two witnesses that we saw the two people they brought to the stands were ej which is meg the stylist hairstylist um and he basically just confirmed that there was a lot of drinking going on a lot of you can definitely argue slandering meg's credibility and then also a neighbor who um unequivocally said that he saw a fight that did transpire before the uh shooting occurred the now there was a um, witness as, as a uh, neighbor he claimed that he saw he saw some pew pews go off near a woman and also saw some pew pews go off near here, the shorter man, the shorter man being Tori, you don't know, Tori is a bit short, and Quan, the bodyguard, he's a bit taller. He said he definitely heard and saw a verbal altercation happen between Meg and Kelsey. He also saw, he saw a physical altercation between those two as well. And then he claimed that after the physical altercation was broken up by one of, if not both men, allegedly Kelsey went to the car, or one of the women went to the car, got a pew, got the pew-pew machine, then pew-pewed <laughs> towards another woman's direction. That kind of brought up the situation of the idea that Kelsey might have actually been the one who um who pew pewed at Megan. So that was his side of the story. The problem though with, with his side of the story, he also claimed that one of the women got jumped by all other three individuals and then also was trying to drag them to the river. So who, who knows, who knows? His story was very colorful as well. So who knows what happened? My takeaway from this is A, I didn't think that there was enough evidence to um, convict Tory on all three um, that's, in that's, terms of him possessing a fight. See, that's the main part I'm getting at is that all three is type crazy like all three i really like one okay two okay three all three is like damn how much evidence did they really have firearm that was pretty you know i mean that it was kind of tough for him to get out of that especially because there's too many people who claim that they saw him with a weapon he there's a lot of things that point out that he did not pew pew make the stallion and more importantly uh, i think it is very interesting how they came to that conclusion especially because the jurors after talking about it for a I'll while a just to, yesterday they decided they wanted to re-listen to the uh recordings from the um interview from kelsey back in september they decided that that's what they wanted to more so rely on so the another takeaway i get, get from this is bro the lapd um and really everything was just a joke to me the whole trial was a joke yeah you know LAPD trial makes me very nervous yeah, like lapd was more, also more than georgia pd anywhere here atlanta Cobb. i would rather go to clayton county and get caught up than go to fucking lapd i don't know why bro i just there's they, a few things about this case that were interesting to me one witness testimonies are notoriously inaccurate that's because the human <laughs> brain fucking sucks <laughs> i remember watching a show on it on netflix i think it was called like brain games or something like <laughs> i ain't gonna lie <laughs> do not put me up on yo if I ever get caught up with any of my mans or anything like that, anything in this world for for me to be put on that stand, I'm telling you right now, whoever you are and you think I'm a witness for your accident, my memory is so shit. It's so shit. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. Don't count on me to be yo Kelsey. Cause it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Like that. Yeah. And he I got all I basically Alzheimer's at twenty one. I'm sorry. I do. He played a test to see how much you can remember in the events of a crime. And it was astonishing how inaccurate and inefficient the human brain is at remembering small details, yeah. which is why witness testimonies aren't usually the primary source of evidence when you're trying to convict somebody. Yeah. I mean, assuming it's the same in this country, in Canada, when you're in criminal court, you have to get the jurors to believe beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the mm -hmm. standard. Yeah. Beyond a reasonable doubt. And I would struggle to believe that this was beyond a reasonable doubt, mainly due to the fact that there was no... The DNA results were inconclusive, so there was no way to prove that Tori was the one that actually shot it, yeah. except for witness testimonies. But the witness testimonies are even weaker due to the fact <laughs> that they were all drunk. And so the only yeah, person in this true. situation but that probably had a sober testimony Kassab would be the neighbor, but that then nigga his story yeah, sounded crazy yeah, too. It, it, it all sounded crazy. Yeah, so, so people all of that being said, doesn't it doesn't mean he did or didn't do it. It just means that I can't possibly believe that it happened beyond a reasonable doubt, but that's me. Look, at the end of the day, witness tampering exists. Kelsey said a whole bunch of things on record, and then next thing you know, 
she's trying to back up from those statements saying, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. I'm not I plead the fifth. Either. That wasn't true. I, I Honestly, I didn't even know why I said that. I'm, I'm actually surprised the judge allowed her to stay on the stand that long. Because even when we were getting information from it, and to be also to be fair, the information the public was receiving was very exclusive and selective to whatever was given to us. So it's not that like we have everything. Kelsey could have been on the stands sweating profusely while she sat there and was rearranging her story. Like, we, we, we actually don't know. This whole thing was crazy. Oh, let me say this about the DNA thing. Yeah, for people that who don't know, because it is true, um, Tori's DNA or fingerprints was not found on the magazine. However, the DNA and fingerprint on the gun was inconclusive. However, both experts that came from both the defense and prosecutor side, they both sat there and said, if he did indeed handle the gun and pew pewed three to five times, they would believe that his his fingerprints would be on the gun pretty pretty co concretely. So the simple fact that that wasn't there is also interesting. Think However- wearing, You think he was wearing gloves? Um, but then if he was, no, I don't think he was wearing gloves. he cleaned it? So that was the other conversation. However, if he cleaned it, both Meg, they I think both Meg and Kelsey's story would have said that he cleaned, he cleaned it. it before the police came. Mm -hmm. And then when you go look back at it, if I'm not mistaken, Tori was the first one out the car already laying on the ground and then Meg and then Kelsey came out. So if I'm not mistaken, Kelsey was the um, last one who came out the car. I could be mistaken by that. This is not like um, law and order, bro. <laughs> it's not like they just get a bunch of semen sample and, like, ah, 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 and he's like, oh, I got it. They just sit there and examine it like, hey, yo. yeah. That's that's it right there. 30 years, got him. Got him. That's not that's not <laughs> how it goes. I remember we I got robbed before at my um at my house, and the people who robbed me opened up the window, picked up a glass, put it to the side, and then hopped in our, our house in our um hopped in the window to our house. And they were not to. able to, even though he was a touch and shit. If oh. you can borderline get his fingerprint on the damn glass, it just it wasn't enough to actually get uh, a clear match. So this isn't wow. Batman Arkham Asylum, way more to it. And fortunately, everything was inconclusive. The reason why I said the LAPD thing is crazy is because somebody, even even though originally Meg had sat there and said she stepped on glass and that was her original oh, story, see, see, that was the original, see, original story, see, see. they got called because of the gunshots and they got there and for whatever reason, Kelsey's fingerprints nor Quan's fingerprints were ever taken. To me, that's, that's the reason why it was lazy. What the? What the? That was never taken into consideration. They just only took. See, 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 see. This is what I was saying. I was saying I don't know if the justice system is fully justified in the actions that they do to justify what has been committed, whether it's murder, whether it's uh, assault, whether it's uh, gun possession, bro. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. And the worst thing about it is it's never it's never fair no matter where you are. It's never fair to black men. And me being black, even dark skin at that, even dark skin at that, I would never personally put myself in a situation to where that would even have to be a circumstance to begin with. You feel me? But I do have to resonate and be a part of the party that recognizes that the justice system is definitely um more stricter and more um concrete towards black men because you know we don't really have it easy out here and i'm not saying that as a as a as a escape goat but i'm just saying it as you know realistically we gotta we gotta grind we gotta grind and we can't mess we can't mess up as much so it sucks that tory even if he did mess up he got caught up with something that shouldn't even happen to begin with and all this basically just or, or but all this basically just comes from being jealous, you know, whether it's Tori, whether it's Kelsey, whether it's Meg, whether it's Kylie. It's just a whole bunch of jealousy and greed and lust. So hey, couldn't be me though. <laughs> Could be me though. <laughs> Even the way that they talked about it and they discussed and who they interviewed and how they did things, all of that was lazy. It was a lot of things that I just, it, the, the sad part about it is even though um, Meg believes that Tori did it, I don't believe that even, I would I would assume that even after everything and hearing what everybody had said, especially having your friend come up there and her whole testimony just shifts completely and then somebody else saying something else drastically different from your story, even though yes, Meg sat there and said that he did it and now he's in jail. I don't, I don't, I don't even, if Meg is there, I don't think that she's 
really even still pleased with how everything transpired herself. Like everybody just went through her personal business and her, her friend literally switched up her whole story about what ended up happening that night at the friend. last minute. And you thought that personal. that was gonna be your actual Me best um, eyewitness and come to find out it wasn't <laughs> on the trial. I've been so, I've been hey man, I, I, Meg got what she wanted, I but I, I, I don't think this. anybody, genuinely, anybody who's following this do not, does not believe that there was enough evidence to convince him without a reason, with beyond a reasonable doubt, um, for Tori to be convicted on all three, though, yeah. and that's that's the sad part, I think. This trial kind of just became a fiasco, where it kind of like the um, Johnny Depp trial, where it became entertainment for a lot of people, and people began to pick sides and affiliations and ride with that side and affiliation. But both of these guys do not know who you are and do not care about you. Some people are making it to a black woman issue. Social it's not. In all reality, Don't when a crime is going on in a vehicle, unless someone is recording, you're kind of relying on what. Yeah. testimonies and DNA because how else are you supposed to get evidence like the truth is elusive and there's no way to verify anything the system is not perfect at all in fact there's millions of fucking flaws in it and so I'm pretty sure Tory's gonna maintain his innocence like he's not ever gonna be, I don't think he's gonna come out on a documentary and be like yeah I shot that bitch I told her dance bitch <laughs> dance I think this just became entertainment for a lot of people and just to also be fair because I think many people who are saying that Tory didn't do it or he's there's not enough to, to be fair to Meg's side I think and I also think to be fair to the jury because I think a lot of people are trying to figure out like how did they come to this conclusion? I think what ended up happening is the the whole court case was such a shit show that mm -hmm. I think a lot of the I think a lot of jurors probably just decided to opt in to use uh, utilize a lot of the information that was um, beyond it yeah, previously brought in and beyond people's testimonies because it just didn't seem and feel as if like anybody was in that courtroom telling the truth. And that's really again that's really the sad part, bro. It is not even even the eyewitness. I'm like, bro, he literally sat there and said. Three people were jumping one of the women, and it seemed as if like they were about to drag her into the river. I was like, bro, what? Like, what did you see? Like that? That is that's just as crazy, if not more crazier, than a Meg story. Like, I have no idea. Your story is crazier than Meg's, and I didn't even think Meg's story was like believable at all. Do you think the social pressure of like how much attention the case was getting had anything to do with it? With, with course, whose decision? Or jury? From my understanding, when it comes to jury selection, they make sure that these people are not influenced at all. So these of people Marcel. but no no I'm, I'm telling you I'm telling you I but also from what I understand the age of these people I don't know how much information they would know about it either her they, claiming that she they're stepped the on glass they're the jurors in the most popular trial going on right now Bad. oh well they claim that uh, allegedly this is this is what a lawyer told me that normally this type of jury selection with this high pro high profile of a case they send them home immediately and they cannot touch their phones for as long as they're on trial now excuse me man, man come on now be real be real be real be real be real. You know, half of them people cannot go out with it, cannot go a whole day without touching their phone. Even me personally, I can say it. I can say it. I can say it. I'm not in denial. I cannot go a whole day without touching my phone because I'm just addicted to Twitter. I can't I can't lie. If you see my screen time, I can pull up my screen. Actually, let me pull up my screen time right now for y'all. In the middle of the video, I'm pulling up my screen time. You know, just, just to let y'all know I'm really human for real. All right. Just let y'all know, I'm really human for real. Uh, all right, let's see where we at with it. Screen time, see all activity. Let's go by the week. Let's go back two weeks. Damn. Look, man. Look, man. What's what's that say right there? YouTube number one, thirteen hours. I gotta turn my brightness up. There we go. <clears throat> YouTube, 13 hours, 2 minutes. Twitter, 12 hours, 18 minutes. Twi I mean, uh, messages, 12 hours, 8 minutes. Twitch, 11 hours, uh, 20 minutes. Do I have a problem? I might have a problem. I might have a problem. I might need to chill. I might need to chill for real. Send them home. They sent them to a um, hotel room. So you, hotel think, room. you think they were living without internet for weeks? I, I fail to believe that, but that's what some people believe. So this, so that's the other part. Let me actually say, let me touch upon that real the quick. The hotel didn't have no Wi-Fi? No, I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> but let me, let me touch upon that. Because that's another thing that people also um, <laughs> talk about as well. Um, and to the lawyer who I talked to, I wish I knew her name. I, I believe in practice, all that sounds great. The other reason why, especially um, men, in particular black men, 
we're, we're kind of paused we until we hear both sides is because of injustice that tends to happen. The way that Tory was treated, he was treated as if like he was guilty first. He did not have no innocence at all. There was no time to prove him whatsoever, especially in public opinion. And we all know for a fact, that's how most of America treats black men in general. Hey. So it's not as if like we're not trying to protect Meg. It's just the fact that we already know how the um, criminal justice system works in this in disfavor for black men. We know how that I've works off the rip. So simple. the reality hey. is that even though, yes, y'all are sitting here telling me, oh, well, we should just accept, especially some people on the timeline are sitting here telling me, oh, we just need to accept the verdict. Oh, it's this, that, and the third. Oh, y'all, y'all still don't want to protect me. I'm not, it's not that I don't want to protect her. It's just the fact that after listening to everybody's testimony, listening to everything that happened, it is very clear. Nigga, everybody who took stands was lying in some capacity. Now, I know that's like how normally court proceedings work, but my goodness, I left I left the, the trial believing myself like, I don't know who the fuck's telling the truth. I don't even know anything they're saying is telling so like, the truth look. and everybody's lying. So because of that, it's just putting disfavorable um, positions to everyone, including the victim, because I don't believe that she even feels confident about what happened after everything was said and done when I'm hearing three different other stories. And the story that I told, if I'm Meg, I told a story that not only does Tory's side saying it's different, Kelsey now came on the stand and said it's also different, and the neighbor who is impartial, impartial is saying something different from my story as well. So I don't even think Meg is completely confident either A, what happened that day, that night, because she was drunk, and also B, I don't think that she's confident about what Kelsey did either that night. So I, I just think that because of, after all of that, even though I do believe because of that, it's not enough to convict this man beyond a reasonable doubt but bro, I, it's just, it's a bunch of shenanigans, nigga. I think the jury picked the person they thought was most likely that did it. Yes. Not the person who did it beyond a reasonable doubt. I there's believe that no as way. well, actually. I do believe that as well. Yeah, and it's like, that's not the standard they were supposed to meet, but I mean, fuck it. They're the jury, so. Hey, man, let us know your comments in the comment section below. Also, check out the last video, man. It was pretty funny, man. Go check it out, man. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And until next time, man. And just like that. <sighs> and just like that, man. And just like that. My man Tori Lenez, as I like to call him, Tori Lenez, will not be making no more fire music for a minute. And I ain't gonna lie, he makes some, oh my God. he makes some hard music, some music that is just like, like he takes, he takes singing to a whole nother level. Not like the weekend level, but he just, I don't know, he, he really hits for real. And, you know, I'm not just looking at him as an artist, but also as a dad too, because, for some reason, he was taking his son in the court. I don't know if that was to appeal more to the jury or to the judge. I do not know. But maybe he maybe he knew. And the cra oh my gosh, the crazy thing is, if I really, if I really go to, let me look this up real quick. If I really go to Tory Lanez's Twitter, people were clowning him. Tory, 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 my brother, my brother, my brother. Look, man, look, y'all. This was his last tweet, man. This was his last tweet, man. He says, I'm going to leave this here one more time and watch how it ages. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. You sit and watch now and don't ever question the God I serve again. This is my last tweet. And the great, like, like, people, oh my gosh, they were, oh my gosh, man. Look, y'all. Damn, Tori, why would you, you jinxed yourself, bro. Why would you do that, Tori? Why would you do that, man? Why would you do that? You people will initially do despicable things and start calling God. Like, like, it's not that he did something initially despicable it's just the fact that for me you know being a christian too it's the fact that he called upon god to come in clutch for him and know that god and, and feel like god would save him and this is the only time he's ever tweeted about god that's the thing like that's the thing that's the thing that's the thing you know it, it hurts it hurts. It hurts, Tori. It hurts, man. But you know what? You win some, you lose some. And if you really are a believer, Tori, then, you know, 
God will take care of his children. But other than that, you might have to sit in that prison for a little bit. And I know you know how to fight, too, because you did press Travis Scott, even though I love Travis Scott. But we're going to let that slide, though. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, be sure to scroll down below, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I'll each and every one of y'all. Make sure to share the video with your friends, your auntie, your family, your cousin. Merry Xmas, man. I forgot to even say that in the beginning of the video. My fault. Merry Actually, Merry Christmas now. It's Christmas time. This, this video is coming out on Christmas time. Actually, a little bit days after, but Merry Christmas, y'all. I hope you guys had a lovely Christmas with the rest of your family. If you spent it alone, know that I'm here for you. I love you dearly. And if you ever want to hit me up, my socials is down below. I'll answer every DM. Don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Anyways, leave a like, hit subscribe. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas day, morning, night, whatever you celebrate, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Love all my Jews. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not yay with it. I'm not yay with it. But, uh, yeah, let me stop chatting. I'm out of here. Peace.